Hello everyone, Nick here at Scog and Dicky. Thank you for stopping by for another of our weekly tech videos. And of course, we are going down the line on a bunch of parts that you can buy for your LS engine. And we're going down the line. We've done, you know, crankshafts and rods and pistons. And we've talked about all sorts of different things like lifters and valve springs and cams. We're kind of going down the line to fulfill some of the basic knowledge that y'all need when picking out parts for your build. And today it's oil pumps. Now this is covering Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS wet sump oil pumps. This is not covering the Gen 5 oil pumps. We did that in another video. Remember, those are all the variable displacement oil pumps, so this does not pertain to those. And this is only covering wet sump. If you have a dry sump engine, the dry sump pumps are really great. KTEC does make a really nice setup for either LS7 or LS9. So. If you've reached this video looking for one of those, give us a ring, we'll get you set up. If you're looking for wet sump stuff, follow along as I kind of break down some of the common questions and misconceptions about a lot of these pumps. A lot of people believe one thing or another, and I'm gonna give you the data that we have gotten direct from Melling, which is one of the better oil pump manufacturers, not only for all aftermarket, it seems, for LS as well. And of course, some of the OEM pumps and what they do, and even this bad boy here is one of the ported versions that we sell. Now, to kind of get you started off, there were essentially two OEM pumps. They, of course, changed part numbers over the years, but to put it in the simplest, most layman's terms to help you guys understand it, the 97 with the LS1 and the c 5 vet <clears throat> all the way up to about the 06 trucks in that ballpark, essentially used one style of oil pump. They had a couple varying different pressures in it, just a few PSI one way or another, but they were essentially all that standard volume and pressure. In 07, when variable valve timing started coming out, and of course displacement on demand is what really came out then, they started coming out with a higher volume oil pump, and it had a little bit higher pressure. The standard ones were about 32 PSI. Again, that is not its max pressure. That's when the valve in here started to open up. So that's why some of y'all might be saying, 32, my truck does 60 on the highway. That's, it's normal. That's, it just starts bleeding off at that point. But some of the higher volume ones from GM like that went up to about 42 PSI. And they did that just because of the extra needs of VVT and you know displacement on demand. They just need that little extra bit. And like we've said in our displacement on demand videos, if you're watching this because you're wondering, you can still run that same factory high volume pump in your now deleted DOD engine. It'll work perfectly fine. But we wanted to kind of dispel some myths. We've heard a lot of crazy different things that have been said about different pressures and volumes over the years. and in the most basic sense, there's really only been two. And I will tell you another thing. The standard volume oil pump, this is one of our ported high volumes here, but our standard volume GM oil pump that was used from 97 to 06 was continued in use with the LS3 and other high performance engines. Unless they had displacement on demand and that's when they had the high volume pump. It's a common misconception. Everybody thinks that because that was like a high performance engine, it came with it. The LSA did come with the high volume pump, LS3 did not. And they still continue to use the LS3 high volume or a standard volume oil pump, sorry, in all of the LS3 crate engines. The 480 horse, 525, and in the wet sump converted LS7, that's right, the LSX B15, you know, the B15, meaning 15 pounds of boost, and all of y'all ignored it and put 20 to 25 on it. It's all right, we know you did, it's okay. They make a lot of power. Standard volume pump in that too, and the LSX 454 and 454R. I know that's hard to hear, I know that's super surprising, but it is based on the demands of the engine, not just throwing extra in it just to throw extra in it if it's not necessary. The standard volume pump does a lot of work. So if it didn't have displacement on demand, it seems like it doesn't need that extra volume. But that might lead you to the next question. Well, then why are you holding a melling oil pump, and why are you standing next to three melling boxes here? One of them being the standard volume with high pressure, the high volume and high pressure, and then the extra high volume, the 10355. Well, there's more to it than just extra volume. And here's kind of the breakdown. The factory oil pumps from GM, somewhere, 
62, 6300, they start to cavitate, meaning that they slowly but surely kind of build up air inside of them just because they cannot pull it in and push it back out fast enough. And the factory oil pump will run 6.8 gallons per minute pretty healthy already, but it'll start to drop after that RPM. The inside of these mellings are designed to counteract that. They're designed to be more efficient, which is why we also offer the GM pump ported and even our coded and ported options too for you guys that want a little extra bit of protection. That extra shape inside that they cast into these and that we port into the factory housings will help you in that problem if efficiency of getting fluids in and getting them back out. Also kind of reduces drag, so a little bit of a side benefit there. I wouldn't say you're gonna pick up 20 horsepower or anything crazy like that, but every little bit helps. Another thing is, what oil pans do you run with these oil pumps? I don't know you're sitting there thinking, Nick, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but any oil pan, oil pan, pan will fit. You're not wrong in terms of fitment. But what I'm saying is, what capacity do you need when you start going to high volume oil pumps? This is a real problem, a real question that we actually get quite a bit. We've also had a handful of people that we've learned about found out the hard way. Now, of course, when you're drag racing, maybe just a street car, this might not be a big enough deal. You know, you throw in a Holly pan, an F body pan, a C6 pan, you know, you're gonna get your six quarts or so, you're really gonna be fine. Autocross though, road race, some of you crazy guys that like to do land speed, you know, you do a half mile event at a runway, a one mile event somewhere else, you have to start worrying about a high volume pump sucking the pan dry before the rest of it can drain back down. This is a real concern, so much so that I was fortunate enough to grab some information from a GM engineer that developed the oil pumps for the performance engines on the LS series and actually had ran into that themselves in testing. The high volume pumps would suck a pan dry if put at sustained RPM for long enough. Well, that's kind of what we do in some of those forms of racing. Some we don't, but some do. So it's a thing to keep in mind. So if you're gonna be running one of these high volume oil pumps, keep that in mind. The six quart pan might not be enough if you're doing certain types of racing. You'd want a baffled pan anyway if you're doing road racing, so give us a call for a Canton, a Moroso, any of those other kind of pans like that. They really are trick. They have extra capacity to handle the volume demands of these oil pumps. I hope I was able to answer some questions here for you. Again, we do these hot videos all the time for you guys, wanting to answer questions, you know, I'm doing a Turbo 5.3, do I need, you know, the Millington, you know, 3, 355, do I need the big honking one? No, you might just need some extra pressure and you'll be good to go. Or am I building a Road Race 427 and I'm not using dry sump? Yeah, get a setup on an oil pan and a good high volume, high pressure oil pump and you'll be good to go season after season. So if you have any further questions, please give us a call or go to our website we also can uh, answer emails or questions there in our chat and we appreciate you stopping by for more information that helps out hot rodders like you and me and we will see you next week for another weekly tech video thanks for stopping by